I'm just uh, admitting everyone as uh, as we come in. Um, I think we're going to leave everyone um, unmuted um, while everyone joins, and then once we uh, once we kick off, I'll mute everyone, and uh, we'll take it from there. I'll be perturbed if I don't appear to be looking at the camera. I'm uh, currently just. Uh, managing our waiting room and uh, admitting people as they arrive. Alan, I'll be waiting for your signal to start. <laughs> yep, um, yeah. we, we've got 27 in now. So if you want to kick off with the intro, then, you know, I think uh, five minutes to get everyone in is okay. So uh, kick off then, Bish. Thank you, Alan. Is everyone able to hear me clearly? If uh there are any issues in the voice drop a note in the chat um, i hope my voice is clearly audible there are some video um, networking issues today but i hope the video um, even goes through quite nicely so first of all i would like to thank everyone whoever has taken time out of their evening and joining for this session i hope we won't disappoint you all it's an exciting topic now for today business architecture and uh, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, wherever people are dialing in from whichever part of the globe. Uh, I am Bish Pradhan. I work as a business analyst at News UK. Joining me today will be Nitesh Thakur, who is a seasoned professional and uh, is working as business architect. Uh, before we um, start the session, there are some do's and don'ts we need to follow. All participants will be muted. After the presentation, uh, there will be a short QA session. Uh, if anyone has a question, feel free to drop a note on the chat box. We will take in the questions and putting it during the Q&A session. The session is being recorded and will be uploaded onto YouTube. We will send the link post the event so everyone can use it for their reference. I would highly advise for people to be social, at least during these days when we all are working remotely. Help us to promote this event, be social. There is a Twitter uh, tag handler attached to this, uh, BA underscore slash. Use it to promote and spread the word among your contacts. And lastly, there is a QR code. Uh, this has been particularly created to understand the disciplines from where people are joining this event. Either they can be business architect, business analyst, project manager. And there, is a, there are two portions of the survey. One identifies your discipline. The second is about the feedback on the event. So feel free to drop a note on the feedback. Based on that, we will continue to improve in our future events. The deck will be shared with all the participants. Not to worry if you have missed anything. We'll send a follow-up email after the event. And if anyone has attended the previous uh, event, I would like to remind that Zoom sessions can be hacked all over the world, please don't try to do it today. We want everyone to have a smooth journey. And before, before we begin, there are a few points I would like to mention. In our future events, we would like people to reach out to us. If you want to discuss about any topic or if you have got any speakers in mind, our next event will be in a month's time. So we have a quite an exciting agenda down the line be in touch with us in the future and we have our email id hello.ba at gmail.com any questions or queries feel free to drop us now what is ba slash i would agree that some of the participants would have joined to our previous event so it's a uh, shared community where we want to promote learning across multi disciplines the reason being let me give an example if you are working as a programmer or a developer or a technical architect or an infrastructure engineer the mindset is very siloed you have got a specialist skill set and if you are good at that you get your job done but it's not the case with as a, with business analyst or business architect or product manager or project manager where you need a variety of tool sets at your disposal it's not something hard and soft or black and white where you can distinguish clearly between one set of skills and the other set of skills. These professions need people to have soft skills as well as hard skills. And we as a community, we want to promote learning by discussing exciting topics through the series of events in the future. I would like to introduce Nitesh Thakur. He is a very good friend of mine. I have known him for the past 10 years. We studied together and he reminded me that we also struggled together to 
get our foothold in the market. And now I'd like to hand it over to Nitesh, who would be talking about business architecture. Very good evening, afternoon, morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nitesh Thakwin. Vishweshwar has given a small presentation, or rather say introduction of uh, myself. Uh, I'm a senior business architect with Capita, and I'm here uh, to, to uh, do what I always wanted to kind of impart the knowledge and my experience uh, to the fellow business analysts and architects. Uh, who either want uh, to pursue uh, the career of business architecture or get in general understanding of what business architecture is and how does that all fit together. So if you can see my screen, uh, let me just confirm the screen and it all goes into the presentation mode. So what are we going to learn today? I'm going to introduce uh, what is business architecture and don't get intimidated by the word enterprise because it is and business architecture is one of the vital elements of enterprise architecture so it's all important to understand enterprise architecture and see how business architecture uh, fits into the enterprise architecture so i'll be introducing that uh, i'll be taking you through the applications of the business architecture so it's saying that uh, knowledge is an illusion if it's not being applied so if you say that I have the business architecture skills, where do we use the business architecture skills in the industry? Where all are we using the business architecture? So I'll take you through a few examples. Uh, I'll take you through the responsibilities of a typical business architect. What are the things that the business architects do and the outputs which is expected out of them? Because as I can understand, I myself have been a business analyst in the past. So, we, there are outputs expected out of you, the requirements document, the process documents, so on and so forth. So I can take you, I will be taking you through those artifacts. The other more important thing, and I'm pretty sure many of people would be interested in it, is how does business analysis and business architecture fit together? How do we cross our paths? How in the world of this transformation, IT or business transformation, how do they all fit together? Where does business and analyst work and where does a business architect work? And how can a business analyst become a business architect? So I will be covering these points, not necessarily in this order, neither there will be a separate slide for it, but by the end of it, I will have touched most of these points. Due to the time limitations, business architecture is a very vast topic. Uh, I would not be able to cover in details. What I aim is to provide a high level view introduction. And if you are interested, we can always get in touch and I'm very much happy to help you out. So let's begin with what is business architecture? Before that, let's understand what is enterprise architecture. So many of people you might know, or if you don't know, here is the definition. And it is a practice for conducting enterprise analysis, design, planning, and implementation using a comprehensive approach at all times for the successful development and execution of strategy. Okay, so what it tells you is that if you are implementing something, it if your product, your service, your improvement, you have delivered does not align to the strategy, it does not add value. And that is the core of it, all right? It works more at a strategic level, all right? So there you might have started seeing the difference between business analyst and, and, and the enterprise architecture. Business analysis is more about product, program, a particular project, you are delivering a particular application, whereas enterprise architecture, which includes business architecture, is dealing more at a strategic level and we will see how it all relates together. This is a typical diagram, which is also called as the architecture development method. It is the formal TOGAF diagram. TOGAF is uh, the open group architecture framework. It is the widely used enterprise architecture framework. And you can see in this cross circle diagram, uh, it starts with the preliminary phase and the vision, and then you see the next blocks from B, C, and D, which are the building blocks, or rather say the four domains, architectural domains of enterprise architecture. So you might question, why did I say four domains? In the block C, 
uh, information architecture, you have data architecture and application architecture both rolled up together. So it starts with the vision, business architecture, information architecture, and technology architecture. Now, you would ask me, what, what's the difference between these architectures? So the business architecture, it deals on the business front, as in what do the business want? The information architecture uh, identifies what are the applications and the information required to deliver what the business wants. And the technology architecture identifies the hardware and the technology required to deliver what the business wants. It's as simple as that. And then you can see the further phases are solutions and options, where we identify what are the possible solutions that exist within the organization, or we have to go outside and procure those solutions. Then we create a bit of a planning. How are we going to move from point A to point B? Because it's a journey. You can't move from point A to where you want to go like that. You have to have a proper migration planning because there is an organization impact. And then you have an implementation governance to make sure whatever you have planned is going as per the plan. And then, of course, we have to have some leeway and some uh, a governance mechanism to make sure if at all there is a change required, how that could be managed. So I don't want to get into the details because it itself is a subject in itself, but this is where this, this is used to show you where in the enterprise architecture, business architecture fits in the entire wheel as a core important. So what is business architecture? It is a blueprint of the enterprise that provides a common understanding of the organization, and it's used to align the strategic objectives and the tactical demands. It's, these are heavy words, but let me just break down to you. Business architecture is used to reveal how the organization is structured and can clearly demonstrate how the elements such as the capabilities, the processes, the organization, and the information they fit together in order to in order to realize the common goal of the organization, which is set at the strategic level. Now, don't get intimidated. There's a lot of work. But let me break it down to you by showing you the application of the business architecture. And that would probably try to kind of put things into perspective. So where do we use the business architecture, all right? We know business analysts are used for delivering solution, gathering requirements, and so on and so forth. Where do we use business architectures? Business architectures could be used in strategic planning, where they're used to identify the capability, enhancement requirement, or whether the organization needs a new capability uh, to achieve the organization's objectives. Okay. The other thing is they are used in transformation programs. Business architectures help to create the baseline and the target operating model, which acts as a cornerstone for any transformation programs. Let me just try to create a relation between this. I'm pretty sure most of the business analysts must have heard the word target operating model. So when the business architects create the target operating models and the common gathering activity and the solution development and delivery, how do we make sure that whatever requirements that we have gathered is delivered the target operating model. The business analyst to make sure there is a continuous traceability of the requirements feeding in and realizing the target operating model. They're also responsible for ensuring the changes in the target operating model, if any. Business architects also deliver organization assessment. And they help the organizations to identify the KPIs and the performance assessment of different business units or uh, entity or enterprise, extended enterprise, whatever you may like to call it as, or you may call it as a function. They help the organization to do that assessment. And this is something would have lit the eyes of many business analysts, products and services roadmap. And I saw a few of these uh, uh, of our colleagues who have joined. Uh, one of them was a product manager. So the question would be, how is a business architect different than a product manager, all right, who is also creating a product roadmap. I would say the basic DNA would be the same. We are creating the product roadmap. But the main difference is the business architect is looking on the left-hand side of when the product development decision was taken. So the product manager identifies a product and creates a product roadmap for the next two, three, five years out of a particular product. But as the business architect works in the background, 
to identify why do we need the particular product to deliver what. And hence, I would say there's a bit of an overlap there, but this is not the only thing, one of the deliverables, the business architect or the areas the business architect will be working. The other important area they work is the mergers and acquisitions. Uh, say, for example, if two entities are merging, right, they come with certain capabilities, entity A and entity B comes with certain capabilities. And for the assessment of the best value propositions, there is an assessment of these capabilities done in order to make sure that the mergers and acquisition adds value as a unified entity. And then they make the decisions, what department and how these capabilities work together. What is the complexity? What is the com commonality? What are the applications that support these capabilities? How easy or difficult will be the process? So these are the different areas where the business architects work. Just to give you a flavor, not the only, but few of the areas where business architects work. Now you might be asking, or rather I should bring your attention to that I have used a lot of times uh, the word organization, enterprise, strategy. And this is to highlight the difference between the scope of work of a business analyst and the scope of work of a business architect. A business analyst, like I was in my past, uh, I was working more or less on uh, individual projects or a program or a particular application development, gathering requirement, either by using process mapping or interviews or so on and so forth, creating a requirement traceability metrics and all of that. And my focus and scope was narrowed to a particular area, product or an application. Whereas a business architect has to look at a strategic, at an enterprise and an organization at an entity level. You will probably in the end look at yeah, what products will deliver what we want, but it all starts, they're always looking at a very high level value propositions. What is it that the organization wants? The product and the applications tell you how we will be delivering what the organizations want. But the business architect constantly works with people uh, to identify what is it that they want. Another thing to look at is there is a word called architect is business architecture. So architect by the name itself, before I was introduced to this uh, 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 field of work, uh, architect for me was an architect who creates the building plan. Uh, and to be honest, when I started working as a business architect, I could draw some parallels between an architect, an architect who creates a building plan, and the business architect. We both create plans, we both create drawings. The, the artifacts that we create are views based on the viewpoints or the concerns of the stakeholders. A business architect goes out and talks to the stakeholders and comes up with a view which is highlighting the concerns of that particular stakeholder. So let me give you an example. Uh, if you are considering a house, okay, so there are three stakeholders in a house. Uh, one is uh, the builder who does all the uh, masonry work, the concrete laying and everything. And then there is a plumber and then there's an electrician. These three stakeholders have different viewpoints. A plumber would only want to see which are the areas you want the radiators, all right? Where is going to, which, which are the areas from where would you have your pipes going in? Uh, where ha what is it that you want? What type of heating that you want? And probably this is what he's concerned. Whereas an electrician is having a viewpoint that he or she wants to know, where do you want uh, the electrical points? What is it that you want to do in your house? And he wants to view, have a view of where the electrical wires are, where the connections are, where the utilities are, where do you want to use them. Whereas the builder will be, will be looking at where are we putting the iron beads? Where do you want to have a brick wall? And all of that. These are three stakeholders. They have different viewpoints. And the business architect's job is to create a view to address and highlight the concern that would help highlight the concern of these three different stakeholders. I just try to oversimplify it, but it must give you a gist of what a business architect would ideally be doing. Now, let me give you a very recent example. Just before this call, I received a call from my company CEO, and he asked me, 
to help him identify one of our business units. Uh, is that business unit sustainable if that business unit moves out of our organizations, which is Capita? And that is the concern of the CEO. He just wants to know that. Now, I, as a business architect, is responsible to come up with a view and the artifacts that would help the CEO to understand whether that business unit is sustainable. So what will I do? I will go and understand what the organization is. I will go and understand what the stakeholders are, who the suppliers are, so on and so forth. I will not be looking at individual applications. I will not be looking at individual products. I will be looking at an enterprise level. I will be looking at addressing the concern of the stakeholder. And that is one of the important points of the business architect to understand the concerns of the stakeholder and see how we can highlight that concern and help take decisions from there. So let's move on to the next phase of what does a business architect do? And this is uh, taking a thread from what I just discussed. Business architects help to identify the what, which is the capabilities and the information, right? Why for the organization, like the policies, rules and regulations, the vision, strategies, and tactics, right? Why should we do this? It helps you to identify and put together how we are going to do, like identify either the existing products and services, do a value stream, the initiatives and the projects. Bear in mind, we will not be managing, business architects will not be managing the products or delivering the projects. They will just create a view to knit everything together in order to create a view for the stakeholders to take decisions. Who and where, like the stakeholders and the organization, and then the decisions and the events, when, what should be done? Is there a particular point in time in the next year or next couple of years that certain thing needs to be done, either because of the regulatory requirement or because of the strategy that, and how well, because if you don't measure it, why we need to do things, what's the improvement by certain initiative, there is no value to it. So business architects definitely constantly work to ensure there are KPIs identified for the capabilities and they, 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 they are used for measurement of any improvements that come out of it. Uh, let me further simplify this uh, to show you a bit of a top-down view of uh, a typical transformation project. You might call it as an IT project and see how does thing, how do things flow and where does the business architect work? So let's go to the next slide. So things always start in an organization with a business vision and motivation, all right? Then you have the strategy that is derived from the business vision and motivation. And then you have the incentives, the value and the metrics that measure the performance. It is quite likely that in an organization, and I'm telling by my experience, things are not always very clear at the top, all right? You might have a business vision and motivation statements, but people are not necessarily very clear about how we are measuring it, all right? What is the value? It is there just because someone has put it there, and, that's the, and sometimes there are huge gaps. These strategy incentives and metrics ideally should drive the capabilities, its assessment, associations, budgets, when I say that. The capabilities helps to realize the strategy and the vision, all right? And the metrics measure the performance of these capabilities of how well they are able to uh, deliver what they're supposed to do in order to realize the strategy. And the processes support or, or utilize the capabilities. Many a times, from my experience, I've realized when I go in to do the capability assessment, I don't have the KPIs that tells me how good or bad that capability is. So what I have to do, I have to move, take a step further to move to the top and define the metrics of measurement, all right? I have to sometimes go back and question the strategy because many a times business functions do not have a statement of purpose, like what is it that they do? They do not have a clear statement. Everything is very blurry. So business architects also play an important part in helping the organizations, entities to define that, to define the KPIs. And yes, nonetheless, they do the capability assessment and all of that, and also help them link the data entities. And this is where you might find it, okay, the data, this is not the domain of the business architect. There is nothing called as not a domain. 
all right? We are business analysts. We have seen the IT side of things. I cannot just remove all the knowledge and say that I'm not going to use it. If you have that knowledge, why not use it? So I might probably sometimes encroach in the territory of data or solutions just to create a better view, all right? It depends upon what is it that would add value to the customer to create that particular view, all right? Based on that, the assessments, you come up with the specifications and the roadmaps, which is essentially what is it that you want to do. So I'll give you an example of what does a roadmap look like, so don't worry. And based on the roadmaps, you will have a particular goals of the users, what the products and services that will be used to deliver the roadmap, and particular risks and controls uh, that, that essentially influence uh, the roadmap or a particular uh, products or services. So this is a bit of a top-down approach. We as business analysts, we normally work in the zone where the product services are, or the roles and users are, or particular systems are. And everything is triggered by a roadmap. How is a roadmap created? With all the things that I explained to you at the top, the business vision, the strategy, the metrics, the assessment of the capabilities. And once that is done, we identify what is it that we need to do and when do we need to do that? And we come up with a roadmap and the roadmap then triggers the projects and the individual programs. Let me to you further, the lenses, reports, and dashboards are just to tell you what we like. It's like the PMO stuff. We see what the reports, dashboards for a particular project work is. How do we fit together? I have touched that point. Now, we as business analysts, we always, I shouldn't say always, most of the times we are hovering around this area of, yeah, processes, the requirements, most of the times, most of the times, not always, most of the times. So let's take a look that this, this, this is in the end-to-end -end value stream. Like for example, please ignore the word agile. It could be agile or any delivery method. Uh, please ignore that. Uh, in the end-to-end -end value stream, we are a part of the delivery of solution. Now look at how, what does the end-to-end -end look like? Okay, so, end to end looks like there is a goal and strategy at the left then there is someone who does the business architecture comes up with the roadmap and that drives the delivery of solutions and then we measure the success so what do we do in the business architecture to create the, roadmap? the business architect works with the businesses and the ceos and the head of the departments the owner of the business to clarify the goals and strategy Sometimes it also goes on to defining the goals and strategy if the clarity is not existing. So you might probably go for defining the strategy with the business. But we will never own anything. We will assist the business to define it, but we will not be owning it. We will identify what is the value proposition. Then we will identify what are the capabilities that will help you deliver those goals and strategies. And once the capabilities are identified, we prioritize those capabilities and do an assessment, like how good or bad are these capabilities performing to deliver the goals and objectives of the organization. And that would give us the gaps, i.e., say, for example, I identify a capability of, say, uh, online business. One of the important capability of the online business is transportation, right? So do i have what is the performance of my capability so i will have to define the kpis of the capability called transportation all right and then or uh, measure the performance of uh, that capabilities the kpi could be uh, does it meet uh, the time that has been promised uh, what is the cost that is involved in uh, uh, delivering a particular product or realizing or executing that capability so on and so forth and once that assessment is done uh, i will create uh, a nice kind of a heat map of the performance of each of these capabilities and that would help the business to take decisions like ah that capability we are investing a lot of money but the performance is not that great so what should we do so either we have to invest more or we can take a decision to outsource it or do we need to phase out whatever the decision could be so it helps you to take the decisions it could help us identify the gaps and then we come up with what is the expected outcome that we want what do we want to do with it like i said do we need to outsource it do we need to do some technological advancement do we need to improve the process that supports that capability once that is done we develop the roadmap 
the roadmap, it is we assess the possible scenarios, all the influencing factors, and then we come up with what are the particular solutions that needs to be in place in order to fill those gaps and realize those expected outcomes. So let me explain that to you a bit more granular level with an example of a roadmap, and I think then it would be more clearer to you. This is a template example of a typical roadmap using the life cycle format. So as you can see, right in the middle, there is projects and initiatives. That is row number three, right? So you can see you have capability one, capability two to capability four. And then you can see there is a time uh, uh, on the columns. You've got the times from January 2018 to September 2018. So this is a time period for which we have created the roadmap. So you can see for capability one, we have identified to go from point A to point B, which is the business change row. You can see the first row. The current state is there is no online sales. There is declining market share. There is no new patent for months downtime for 4%. That is where we are and where we want to go after all the assessment based on the strategy. We want to make sure we've got online sales increasing, market shares and new patents every month's downtime should be 0.1%. How are we going to move from point A to point B? What is it that is needed? So we phase it out and create a roadmap that will gradually take us in, in the incremental manner from point A to point B. It is sometimes also called as capability maturity map or a capability maturity model. How is the particular capability maturing to achieve the organization's objectives? So you can see the capability one, in order to move from point A to point B, we have identified five different projects and we have identified the timelines for these projects when they should be delivered. Other important thing that is, is vital to highlight is there are different influencing factors that help us uh, define when a particular project or capability should be improved, such as it could be regulatory requirement, for example, GDPR, that certain systems and applications should be in place so for a particular capability like information management or employee data management there should be a project that delivers before that time so in this roadmap you will have a project that delivers before the gdpr deadline and that helps to identify when a particular project and what in that capability should be delivered similarly that could be technological influencing factors for example if Windows 2007 or XP is losing support, there should be a, a project in place to make sure uh, that before the systems or applications uh, lose support, uh, we are actually uh, migrating to an upgraded version, so on and so forth. Another most important point is what is it this, this, these projects or capabilities are helping us to achieve? So it's also helpful to identify by doing these particular projects or increments in the capability, how are we going to improve? So we've identified the KPIs. You can see in row number two, market share and revenue. And you highlight by, by 2015, we, might, we must have finished project one in capability one, in capability two, project one, and we have, would have gap close to closed gap two in capability four, and our revenue would have increased to 40 million, so on and so forth. So it helps to not only create a plan of what to do, it also tells us why we are doing it, not just because of the KPIs, but there are other influencing factors like technological, yeah, economical, uh, political, and how it is moving us from point A to point B. Next thing, how to become a business architect. Now, there is no uh, textbook uh, answer uh, that answers this question. But what I'll tell you is I'll tell you from my experience of uh, how I, I transitioned from being a business analyst to a business process analyst to a business architect. The most important thing is you have to broaden your scope and look beyond IT. So just uh, think back of the first diagram that I show you uh, in that crop circle diagram. Uh, the first block was uh, of the four architectural domains was business architecture. 
So even before we look at the applications and the technology, all right, we have to look at the business architecture. We have, it has to be tool application agnostic. We are more leaning towards the business and understanding what they want uh, rather than asking how they want and uh, applications and technologies that is going to deliver. So that's what I meant by broad new scope. Many of you be, uh, would be already doing that because from my experience, I've seen, although business analyst by BCS is a common terminology, but there are people, business analysts who are more leaning towards the business and there are business analysts who are more leaning towards the IT side of things. So uh, if you want to progress being a business architect, I'm not so saying that if you're leaning more towards IT, uh, you can't do it. Uh, it is an added advantage because you will have the IT knowledge uh, and don't look at business architecture in isolation. Look at business architecture as a part of enterprise architecture and enterprise architecture includes everything from business architecture to data architecture, application architecture to technology architecture. So having that IT knowledge is good, all right? But if you're looking just for the business architecture, if your job is of a business architecture, I've, sh I've showed you what are the areas of business you will be asked uh, to add value. More often, uh, it is tool and IT agnostic. Uh, it is more of looking at the organization, uh, uh, looking at the capabilities, uh, looking at how these organization and capabilities interact together in different scenarios. Uh, there would be instances where you will be doing the assessment of the capabilities and looking at what are the applications that deliver those capabilities. And there, there is, of course, a crossover overlap there. But from my experience, uh, you will be leaning more towards the business majority of the times. Uh, you have to learn to anticipate and articulate stakeholders' concerns. That is the most important thing because most of the times you will be dealing with the stakeholders uh, at the C-level suite. Uh, COOs, function heads, uh, sometimes CEOs, uh, and they, they don't give much time to you and they expect uh, a lot. Uh, so you have to learn the skill of anticipating and articulating. It doesn't say that you are not allowed to ask questions. Of course, when they ask you to do something, they assign a team to help you, uh, but you have to articulate the stakeholders' concerns. And that articulation is done either by producing diagrams, and I told you, architects, drawing a parallel, we create diagrams, lots of diagrams, all right, to, to, to depict the viewpoint of the particular stakeholders in order to highlight, because every stakeholder comes to you with a particular concern. Why would they come to you? Not for any joy. It's because they have some concern. So you have to understand what's the concern, and you have to create a view that helps them highlight that concern, because they're taking your help to secure budget, they are taking your help to trigger a particular project or a particular program. So they, the, you, your artifacts and your output that you create will help them in their decision making. So it's very important there. It will be good to get an understanding of the major frameworks and principles. Uh, I have mentioned a few, uh, which is TOGAF, which is the Open Group uh, Forum. Uh, it is the most widely used enterprise architecture framework. Uh, then you have DODAF, which is the Defense, Department of Defense Architecture Framework, which was the first architecture framework ever defined by US Defense Force. TOGAF is uh, an offshoot of DODAF. Then you have ZACMAN. Uh, they are more or less similar, but it would be, ben it would be good uh, for your benefit to get an understanding of the overall architecture framework. It's a good read. Identify the value of business architecture as in the organization program or project. Uh, from my experience, many a times, uh, I've come across organizations who do not even know what a business architecture does, architect does. Uh, and if you are not convinced yourself and you know what value a business architect adds, uh, you will lose the argument. So I, I have been seasoned in that argument a number of times when I come across people to what value business architects add. Because I'm in consulting, I have to sell this uh, profile, but 
uh, I am convinced business architecture adds significant value, especially having worked across various organizations. There is a massive gap in most of the organizations where they jump to the solution, they jump to the technology, even before realizing why or what do they want. Say, simple example, when I was working in one of my ex-companies, uh, the head of the departments, I was managing two domains. So when I went to these domains and asked them, you've got five million pounds, how are you going to spend it? Have you got a plan for your improvement? They would create a plan just a week before the deadline. A plan cannot be created like that because they just had to spend the money. If I ask them, are these the best places you could spend your money, five million at this point in time? And are these the areas which is going to add most value to the organization? They did not have any answer. Why they did not have any answer? Because they did not do the business architecture. They did not map their capabilities. They did not assess their capabilities. They did not define the value they derive from each of these capabilities and how it aligns to the overall strategy. So if your CEO asks you that, what are you going to say? And I always, always, always used to come up with this argument, and I want a few where people said, yeah, let's go. The other thing is read, read, and read. There's a lot of material. It's, it's a massive topic. There's a lot of white papers at IBM. There are lots of reference architectures for the industries. For example, uh, te te Telecom has a reference architecture. Defense has a reference architecture. When I say reference architecture, as a a uh, reference blueprint, uh, what would the ideal state look like? And you will have to get some idea about what, what it you will get the flavor of you know, what is the work involved in, in, in doing this piece of work. And final bit, if nothing works, you might get in touch uh, with me. I'm more than happy to uh, help you out uh, and see what I can do. Uh, it is all based on my personal experience. Uh, and sometimes uh, the experience is always beneficial. So uh, that would be from me. Uh, I'm not sure I have done justice uh, to this topic or I have confused you more, uh, but uh, this is what I could do in, in four to five slides uh, to explain to you and introduce you business architecture. Thank you so much, Nitesh. It was quite an overwhelming topic to discuss and the audience and it's not possible to discuss everything, but that has given an enough, enough overview for people to understand and get in uh, and think about it if they want to pursue or explore more. That's certainly helpful. We got a few two questions in the line. Uh, one question is from Boma. Hope I have spelled the name correctly. Uh, it appears there is a thin line of overlap of what a business analyst does to what a business architect does. If I have uh, spelled the question incorrect, Boma, please feel free to correct it. Okay, maybe I'm new. Yeah, so, you got it. You got it. Yeah, okay. It's so, it's so it's a thin line between, mm -hmm. in the description, a couple of slides before, uh, there's a thin line what the business analyst does to what the business architect does. Right. Nitesh, do you want to take this? Sorry, can you repeat the question? I, I, I couldn't hear you. There is a thin line of overlap of what a business analyst does to what a business architect does. So oh, how do you... oh yes, if there wasn't oh, if there wasn't an overlap, I myself being a business analyst wouldn't have a transition to a business architect. So let me explain this to you with an example. I was a business analyst uh, looking at technology and then I got an opportunity to look at the processes. So I leaned more towards the business. So when we started looking at the process, when you map the process, the end-to-end, -end, you, you come across the organization structure because then you look at the roles where the particular person sits and all of that, it's all a part of process mapping exercise. Then you create the levels of the processes, level one to level two to level three, and you start creating the view of catalogs of process, so on and so forth. And after that, because I got so used to looking at the organization and then asking the question about what is the purpose of a particular business unit, because they all became a part of mapping the end-to-end -end business process. Uh, I got the opportunity since to create the overall catalog of processes for our expansion project. But that gave me an opportunity to go a level up and look at the capabilities 
Now, I had those skills already. I had this knowledge of the organization already. All I had to do was now take the level off and talk and look at the capabilities. Now, what is the difference between the capability and the process? A process tells you how you do things, whereas the capability tells you what do you do in an organization. So if in the automotive sector, the capabilities, high, very high level capabilities are, yeah, I manufacture, I procure, I sell, right? These are the three, and then at the very beginning, there is product design. These are the capabilities. How we do it, we break it down into processes. Yeah, how do I manufacture? How do I product? Who builds the product? Who sells the products? How do I sell the product? What is the application used for product and all of that? And then I started looking at just the capabilities, not at how it is done. So yeah, there is there is there is an overlap. There is. Right. Thank you, Ditesh. And yeah, when you talk about capabilities and KPIs, it reminded me of our assignment of the key performance indicators. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so next one is from Ian Dale. And he Ian says, a lot of business now see the benefit and use business analysts, but there are a lot of BAs in the marketplace. Is there much of a market for business architects or is it a growing market? Ooh. Uh, as I told you, uh, if you are a business architect, it's a very it's a very responsible position. I'm not saying that business analysis is not, because you are uh, you could be the firing line because you are facing very senior people in the organization. Okay, and the artifacts and the output that you produce is is very detrimental to the decision making process. So uh, there is a lot of weight to it. Uh, and in my opinion, there is there is a mass, there is a good demand uh, uh, in the market. Uh, this is my personal opinion. I am not a recruiter or recruitment agency. I would not know the, the stats, actual stats. But from my experience, uh, I, I don't think personally uh, there there is shortage of requirements for business architects. I hope if I understood your question uh, correctly, but business architecture roles are from the organizations I know, big organizations, you call it as consulting organizations, Capgemini, IBM, Accenture, then you call about the utilities, the industry. Uh, uh, from what I know from my personal experience, say Telefonica, business architect sits with the head of strategy. Right? So I had my opportunity to just have an interaction with them uh, then you have the IAG group, business architect, massive role in the IT transformation project. And these these are senior roles. Uh, uh, you're talking about senior manager to associate director level roles, and they can scale up easily to director level if you've got the right, if you deliver correctly. And yeah. Thanks, Nitesh. Uh, we will be taking one last question because we are running over time. Uh, if you guys have any further questions, feel free to reach out offline or directly to Nitesh over LinkedIn. So here we have the last question from Kotrin. Uh, I have seen that you use the business architecture gills, which is BizBock framework to explain aspects of business architecture. How this differs mm -hmm. from Toga? Uh, BizBock is a tool for implementation of uh, uh, business architecture. As I told you in the beginning, there are different frameworks of uh, enterprise architecture and business architecture is an element of an enterprise architecture. I would never recommend to look at business architecture in isolation with enterprise architecture. There are a few differences, very fine differences between TOGAV, DOGAV, Zachman, and any other enterprise architecture framework. But the fundamental DNA, and when I say what, remains the same. All right, how you go about it, the business architecture approaches might change. But if you ask me what is the industry recognized, that is TOGAF. TOGAF is the industry recognized framework. And if I have to refer something, I would refer to TOGAF. 
Thank you so much, Nitesh. And that was all for the Q&A session. Um, Mo, are you still on the line? Do you want? Yeah, I think that's, that's all good. Um, I guess have my uh, have last two minutes to to wrap all these up. Um, so I think the first thing would be um, if you have um, when you started, if you see the 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 um, the Manti, um, um browser. So please do do use it to um, provide your your feedback of this section. We we appreciate um, that to um, further improve. Uh, section so um, you, you will be able to see have a, a rating and if you you haven't got to the, the menti.com um, at the start of the section please um, go ahead the QR code on, on my screen yeah and while you're doing it um, I thought I'll share with you have a, a quick story uh, because um, people are asking me oh um, it's a very good idea to, to run VA slash but how how it comes about so um of course thank you Bish thank you Alan for for running the event and also thank you Nitash for the, the sharing and I guess the the story of BA slash all comes about around maybe two two years ago so I was at a crossroad for some um, career choices and one of the, the reflections that I, I had at that time is actually most people like as a as business analysts um wouldn't stay as business analysts for life. And they would move on to, to other roles. For, for example, business architect, just like what um, Natash is doing, organization on charges and et cetera. And, and that was why the, I think the giving back element um, to back to the BA profession becomes more difficult and weak. So therefore we, we see lots of events um, in the market about IoT, open banking, agile product, um, data science, and et cetera, but not a lot on business analysis. And essentially from that point onwards, I'm really keen to organize more low cost and good quality events for, for people, not just for business analysts, but for anyone who is um, willing to, to learn something new from different expertise. So that's another reason that I started um, BA Slash. And we do have cover next event um, schedule is on the, the 24th of June, um, Wednesday. Um, we are basically um, confirming with speaker, the highly likely would be on how, how to use really good um, users, uh, user stories. And I think that's a really good topic for not just a business analyst, but um, people who are interested in have knowing what would be contained in you know, user stories to make them useful. And also please contact us um, to join the, the organizing team um, at the moment is uh, myself, Alan and um, Bish, working hard for, for everyone um, have in a, on a voluntary basis. And if you would like to present or you know your colleagues, your fellows would like, would have a really good topic to share with everyone, please contact us as well. So that's, um, that's the, the end of our, um, section. So yeah, so I'll leave, leave that to, to you guys. Thanks everyone. Thanks for giving up your evening and uh, hope you found it useful. Um, I'm going to start uh, exiting you and um, have a great evening. Keep safe. <laughs>